I'm going through and doing some follow-up videos on some of my earlier content. Um, this is my second one. This is going to be on the iActive Evolved all-wheel drive system that's used in the Mazda 3, the CX-30, and then the CX-50. I'm going to be using, the examples used in this one are going to be from my own car, uh, the Mazda 3 Turbo. Mazda said this is the most aggressive um, GVC Plus program they've got. And so it may not translate directly to the other models, but the theory is the same. So I want to start this one off with some uh, observations that I've made. Um, there's three major PIDs that I watch. There's the torque sent to the rear. There's the coupling duty cycle for the solenoid, which is on a scale of zero to hundred percent. And then there's then amperage that you can watch too. The solenoid percent coincides with the pound feet commanded to the rear. Um, 0% is obviously zero. 100% of the command equates to 390 pound feet of torque. That's the limit that Mazda's gotten that it scales all in between there. The amperage it takes to get those different torque um, lockups varies though. And I'll go into that a little bit deeper in the video because you'll be able to watch that in the wet, it's easier to hit the commanded torque than it is in the dry at a lower amperage from the solenoid. So the first slide we're going to look at, um, this is a 15 minute drive. Um, just driving around, nothing major. This is just a normal non-sport traction control on. Um, to explain it a little bit, the two things I'm showing here, blue is the torque produced by the engine. And then um, the orange is the coupling command to the rear. There's a couple things we have to assume here because I cannot see the actual um, torque distribution tables. That's locked in the ECU. Maybe someday we'll get to see that and then I can go back and revise this if I need to. But we're going to base this on some of the platforms that I can see this distribution tables, what they look like, um, and using the same style of coupling that we use. And to just quickly recap that, um, we have an all-wheel drive system that the drive shaft is constantly turning. Every time the ring gear and the differential turns, the coupling or the clutch that pulls the power to the rear is mounted on the rear differential. We have a gear ratio difference between the power transfer unit or the transfer case or the PTO, whatever you want to call it, and the rear differential. Um, we're also overdriven in the rear by 1.1%. Engineering Explained has a really good video on how a system like this works on the GR Corolla. The GR Yaris and the Corolla use the same style of all-wheel drive. They're overdriven by 0.7%. Our overdrive is 1.1%. That doesn't necessarily mean one can pull more to the rear or not. Um, but again, his video is great. I would go watch that and get you a good understanding of how our system can actually pull more torque to the rear than the front when it's needed to. One of the assumptions I'll make is that it operates a lot like any other system like this. Let's say if the engine's commanding 200 pound, or if the engine's producing 200 pound feet of torque, it's commanding 100 to the rear. We would assume that that's as close to 50 50 as you're going to get if the conditions are right. Um, I'll preface all this with torque split in the real world um, varies very quickly. Um, if you're saying you've got a 50, 50, a 60, 40, 30, 70, whatever, those numbers are actually quite a bit, they can be quite a bit different. Um, that's more a sense of the car, let's say it's trying to split the power equally, but if you have more traction in the rear, you're going to get more torque in the rear. Same as if you've got more traction up front, it doesn't make sense to send more traction to the rear or more power to the rear. So it varies very quickly. There are dynos out there that can measure this. Um, they're expensive. I don't have one near me. I don't suspect I'll ever be on one to see, but there, we would have to assume that let's say the car's commanding 390 pound feet of torque to the rear. It's making 320 is what the engine says it's being or being produced we would have to assume that you're getting a pretty significant pull to the rear because that's quite a bit more than whatever your half percent would be. But we won't ever really know unless we can get on one of these dynos that can measure um, front and rear torque actual delivered um, separately to see what this actually looks like on the road. But this is one of those reasons why, especially if you're playing in the snow or the wet, you can get the rear end to kick around and I'll show that um, in a graph of what that looks like when you've got your rear end spinning around like in an oversteer scenario when it's wet. 
So a couple more observations I want to make on this slide before we move on. Um, we've got a commanded baseline torque of at least three pound feet of torque all the time. The only time I see it go to zero is when you're at a stop um, with your foot firmly on the brake. When you start to lift your foot off the brake, it immediately sends um, a commanded amount of torque to the rear and anticipation that you're going to get moving again. That's um, to keep lash out of the drive line. Doesn't feel like you're uh, locking up just to make it a smoother takeoff. The other thing you'll notice is um, quite often on this graph, the blue engine torque goes below zero. That's just what I'm coasting, letting off the throttle. It's commanding a negative amount of torque, keeps the coupling locked up, um, or not locked, well, an amount of torque sent to the rear to help with stabilization. Um, it's expecting you to reapply throttle at some point, so that keeps it from giving any driveline shock when you're reapplying throttle. So we'll start with how um, the system operates when you're taking a corner. This one, um, it was damp outside. The roads were pretty wet. It actually caught me off guard. So that's why I want to keep it in here because it's, it's interesting to me. So we've got steering wheel angle in there. Coupling command is the light blue. Engine torque is purple. And vehicle speed is the dark blue. This is going around a corner. Um, it's nearly a 90 degree corner. Um, I wanted to see what the coupling does when the car starts to slide. So what you can see is in the beginning, the engine torque, we're commanding about 290 at the peak, at uh, the first little peak, and it's commanding the 390 pound feet to the rear. Um, the back end actually started to come uh, around. I wasn't expecting it. Um, so I let off and then got back on it, kept the steering in the same angle, but corrected a little bit. As I reapplied throttle, getting back into it, it commanded, uh, we ended up like 330, pound feet of engine torque and then with about 200 um, commanded to the rear and then as we straightened out the steering wheel it dialed down the coupling torque as we were coming around um, we were pulling out of it um, so that's what it does in the wet it's a little interesting um, probably would have been different if I was expecting that didn't let off the throttle um, so I waited a few days corner dried out went back to it in the dry to see what that looked like Okay, so we've got blue is the steering wheel angle, orange is the coupling commanded torque, and green is the engine produced torque. So you can see as I'm getting into the corner, I'm ramping up the throttle, turning the wheel, as we get some more uh, steering wheel degree in there, it starts pulling more torque to the rear. That's to create a yaw moment to get around the corner um, better in an all wheel drive vehicle. You, if I hit the apex, it pulls a little bit of torque and then it pins it to the 390 as I start to straighten the wheel out. And the closer I get back to what an on-center um, angle is for the steering, it brings the torque commanded down to what would be a closer 50-50. So when we're pulling around a corner, it's trying to pull more torque to the rear to help the car rotate. This is something I find interesting. Um, this is multiple drive cycles, both in the wet and in the dry, kind of averaged together and then put on a scatter. Um, the blue is anything that happened in the dry. The orange is anything that was in the wet. Um, so we can see, you know, there's multiple times I hit um, 390 commanded pound feet of torque in the blue and also on the orange side. Um, the orange sides happen to be a lot closer to each other, so I average them together. There are a couple outliers, um, but you can see so slow and amperage is across the bottom. So let's say two amps. The highest I saw was a little bit like almost 2.1 amps, and that was 390 pound feet commanded in the dry. And you can see overall, it there's a lot more amperage or a lot higher amperage needed to hit that in the dry versus in the wet because you're. Um, I would assume based on some other platforms that I've seen, it's easier for the car to hit the targeted torque to the rear because the traction is, it's limited. It's easier for those wheels to like achieve that and slip a little. Um, it takes more coupling clamp to pull that same amount of power to the rear in the dry. It'll behave in a similar manner when you're doing like low speed, low torque um, with some steering wheel angle like this, if you're moving around just the street to just get going. Um, we're 10 to 14, about 13 miles an hour on this one. The engine torque is orange. It's commanding about 45 pound feet. The coupling torque is blue. At the same time, it's commanding that. We're commanding like 55 to the rear. 
So through like a low speed, low torque, moderate corning scenario, it's again, trying to send more torque to the rear. If we're making a U-turn, um, you can see the steering wheel angle. I rescaled it to just kind of show. So it's a big drop down. We're at full lock and then back up. So that's like just a U-turn. We're going like five miles an hour at the top. Um, the engine's calling for anywhere from like 15 to 30 pound feet. You'll see the clutch torque command um, is quite low. We're in the two to five range. It is pulling the amount of torque that it's sending to the rear down quite a bit when you're doing a really tight U-turn because that can cause drivetrain hop. If it were really locked up, you're going to be trying to have all four wheels turn at vastly different rates when you're in a tight corner. That can be damaging. So it does pull uh, coupling down almost to what the, the preload tension would be in a scenario like that. Another interesting thing that'll do um, is when you're cruising at low um, throttle, so we're at like 21% throttle, throttle input is orange, solenoid command is dark blue, vehicle speed is light blue, and then the engine torque produced is green. Um, so we're cruising along, like I was 55 to 63 is kind of where I started, um, but I don't start showing it till about 58 miles an hour. But you can watch that hump of the all-wheel drive torque clutch command starts bumping up right at about the time we hit 60 miles an hour. Uh, Mazda starts sending some more power to the rear to stabilize the vehicle at higher speeds, and it'll cap out. I mean, if you, if you do the math, um, all the way up to about 90 miles an hour, um, it ends up being, you know, let's say 10% of torque to the rear. Versus if you're just cruising from about 40 to 60, it sends very little to the rear. It's more that preload closer to three. A lot of times it's around 10, um, but it'll start ramping it up as you crest around that 60 mile an hour mark. These are just some of the graphs um, and some of the data I have. I have a lot that I've compiled um, just by data logging, driving around um, from some engineering documents, things like that. If there are some other drive modes or other things you'd like to see about how the all-wheel drive works, uh, let me know and I'll see if I can put something together for that. Thanks.